Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to Happy Gaming News. Every Sunday, we'll cover a few gaming-related news highlights from the previous week. You can always find more information about the topics covered here in the description of the video below. This segment is looking at the week of February 22nd through the 28th. So first off, I thought this was ridiculous, so I wanted to share it here. The game Dying Light came out several weeks ago here in the United States. Over in the United Kingdoms, though, the game just launched a few days ago. And one lucky and super rich fan will have the chance to get their hands on the My Apocalypse edition of the game. This special edition costs almost 400,000 United States dollars and includes some of the craziest things I've ever seen a game come with. That includes zombie survival parkour lessons, your face in the game, a human-sized volatile figurine, branded night vision goggles and adult diapers, a round trip to Techland, the developers, a custom-built zombie-proof shelter, and if you even care at this point, you get four copies of the game and two Razer Tiamat headphones. I'm speechless right now. I want to meet the guy who buys this and see if he can actually parkour after the lessons. <laughs> anyway, uh, moving on. You guys know I love MMOs, and that's why I want to talk about a new one that was successfully kickstarted this last week. The game goes by the name of Crowfall, and its premise actually seems quite promising. It wants to combine aspects of an MMO together with that of a strategy game. This is accomplished by making it so that the hero you create is permanent, but the individual worlds and campaigns actually have an end, causing you to jump between campaigns and interact with new players and take part in new adventures. On top of that, the game hopes to accomplish very open-ended worlds, buildable and destroyable terrain, varying stories and goals, dynamic world creation, and player-owned worlds with player-enforced rules. The game passed its $800,000 funding mark in just four days and has since included some stretch goals, so definitely go check this one out. Speaking of open worlds, some more Final Fantasy XV footage was shown this last week at another active time event. Two videos outlining the dungeons and the wildlife of Final Fantasy XV were both shown, both trying to prepare us for the demo coming this month. The dungeons look dangerous, the wildlife looks stunning, and the game's growing anticipation is killing me. Just be March 17th already, like I don't even care about Type-0 anymore. Just be March 17th already, okay? Anyway, go check out these videos, they are awesome. Before the final big news segment of the show, let's go over some highlighted game releases of this last week. Dragon Ball Xenoverse is the big one and it is the newest game in the Dragon Ball series. This game sees the rise of two new villains attempting to alter the Dragon Ball timeline, and it's up to you and your personally created character to travel to these different times and ensure history in the Dragon Ball universe is unchanged. This game launched for the PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Xbox 360, Xbox One, and PC this last week. And the other game I want to mention is Resident Evil Revelations 2 Episode 1. I love the first Resident Evil Revelations. I love the limited ammo, the dark and claustrophobic areas, stressful situations, just everything. Resident Evil Revelations 2 is taking a different approach with this episodic release schedule, something I'm really not a fan of. However, fans of the older Resident Evil games should get a kick out of this release as well. It's available for all the same platforms as Xenoverse, as well as the PlayStation Vita. However, I have been warned to steer clear of the PC release due to its lacking local offline co-op, despite being advertised on Steam. If that's not an issue for you, I can't imagine anything else would really be too much of an issue. And the final bit of news this week is, once again, more of the unfortunate kind, like week one. Leonard Nimoy, the actor you may most commonly know for playing Spock in the original Star Trek series back in the 60s, has passed away at the age of 83. Now, I wasn't a Star Trek fan, but Leonard Nimoy has appeared in so many other places over the years, I couldn't help but feel saddened by his passing. I mean, the last time I heard his voice was just a month ago, when I was playing Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep for the first time. That's right, Leonard Nimoy was the voice of Master Xehanort, and now the character has to appear in Kingdom Hearts 3 without Leonard. In honor of this great actor, writer, singer, narrator, voice actor, and everything else that he was in between, I ask that you join me in a moment of silence to honor his work. Thanks for watching this week's Happy Gaming News. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share, and I'll see everyone next week. Until then, take care.